Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from Antones in Austin, Texas, for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe! Fuck yeah, the song ended, everybody. Brian Redband's here. Everyone, hey, what's up, everybody? For Red Band. Very exciting stuff. Look at this. Empty. There's a couple empty tables here. People coming in late. Yeah, Austin, Texas. Late. People are out having dinner indoors, ladies and gentlemen. You guys excited to be here? Hello. Good evening. Welcome. This is a live podcast in front of a live audience. How about a big hand for the band, everybody? Huh? Playing before the show starts, a real vibe and energy God, in the so room. Good. It's so a good. lovely, lovely time. Austin, Texas has been great. This is what, episode six or seven of us being here? Things are moving along smoothly. It's good to be here in an open, powerful fucking red state. You know what I'm talking about, people? <laughs> Exciting stuff. The great Ryan J. Ebelt is joining us all the way from Los Angeles, California. Hi, Ryan. He's drawing tonight's episode. He draws every single episode of Kill Tony, every single print, every single everything. Uh, the brand new Kill Tony, the coloring book, is drawn by him. It's a bunch of episodes. You get to color it yourself. How cool is that? I just got mine. He just sent me one. It's amazing. It's lovely. Go to RyanJEbelt.com, get your Kill Tony coloring book, and a bunch of other cool Kill Tony stuff. Some limited edition shirts, and every print from every show, including the road shows, uh, RyanJEbelt.com. And how about one more time for the band, guys? That is, uh, they're going to be with us all night. The great John Dees. John, at John Keys, J O N K E Y Z, has a new single out this week. Check out his Instagram. Matt Muling on electric guitar, everybody. D Madness on bass. The backbone of the band, not the eyes, but the backbone of the band. And Michael Gonzalez on the drums, ladies and gentlemen. A Mexican drummer on Kill Tony. What, what a world we live in. Uh, so yeah, before we start tonight's show, which is going to be super duper exciting, here's a little bit about the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode possible for you. This podcast is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously changed my whole pocket situation. It's designed to fit easily in your front pocket. I was having some neck problems earlier this year. Turns out... You move that stuff to your front pocket, it's a whole nother level. Most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, carrying around old receipts, pictures of their ex, and gift cards in an unorganized mess. I mean, you know about this. You have a bunch of uh, fast food place cards in your wallet. Come on. No, but I do think a lot of people like us still carried around that old wallet, you know? This one holds up to 12 cards, plus it has room for cash. There are over 30 colors and styles. I got the carbon fiber one. It's awesome. If this wasn't enough to win you over, check out the 40,000 five-star reviews. The durable material means each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. You could buy this wallet and carry it for life. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it that they'll give you a 45-day trial. You can test it out for 45 days. If you don't like it, you could send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. Look, I'm telling you people, every single cast member of Kill Tony has one. They use it. It absolutely works. It's sleek. It makes sense. Get your life together. Get rid of your silly, chunky wallet that your grandpa gave you and uh, have a better life with the Ridge Wallet. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash kill Tony. That's ridge.com slash kill Tony. Use the code word kill Tony. Don't forget, get 10% off. It's an amazing thing. Treat yourself. You'll thank me later. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? Wow. Very, very good. Very, very, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, special treat for you and for all of us. Really, this is a treat for Red Band, for me, for the band, uh, because it is happening. The mass exodus that has uh, been swir the rumors have been swirling. Who's next? Everybody's coming. I mean, one after the other. And you guys are in for such a special treat because the newest resident of Austin, Texas, is our guest here tonight. He just moved here. He has been closing every single main room show at the Comedy Store 
Since long before I started, this is a Mitzi Shore appointed, groomed fucking comedian. This is the guy that all your favorite comedians stick around. They wait until the end of the night to be able to all go in and watch him. All your favorite comedians stand in the back of the room and watch this guy when he performs. And it just so happens you're going to get to hang out with him for two hours here on this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of the best comedians in the world, one of my favorites, the great Brian Holtzman, everybody. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. It's about to get wild. I'm a rhinestone cowboy. (laughs) He's here, live in the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the newest resident of Austin, Texas, right here. How long did you live in Los Angeles for, Brian? Oh, I don't really remember. You know, I was in rehab for, I think, 14 years, uh, since 1989. Since 1989, and yeah. now you are a Texan. Now I am uh, a rhinestone cowboy. <laughs> what a long dis- What is that one with the fixing the fucking wires? Uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the guy fixed... Glenn Campbell, you come on, what the fuck, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what part of Austin did you move to, Brian? Uh, Oak, Oak, Oak Hill. Oak Hill. Oak Hill, Oak oh, Hill in the house. Got some Oak Hill. Oh, damn, you have some rich neighbors over here. Oh, Look at yeah. this. The, the yeah. cast of Succession is here, everybody. Look at these fucking... Brian lives in a gated community. The first day he was here, he did a live stream, showed the gate code for the whole you, entire neighborhood. Are you guys <laughs> brothers? <laughs> It does. No, you both have that fucking, like, little Rogan heads over there. You guys have that fucking, those HGH skulls. You guys taking uh, BPC-157? What's going on over there? All right, let's keep it moving along. Well, Holtzman's going into a bag. What do we got? Oh, some wet wipes. I'm excited about that. Brian, did you watch the Super Bowl? What were your thoughts about the Super Bowl? I want to know what that bitch was doing on the sideline. <laughs> wait, wait. What were you talking about? <laughs> What bitch? On I want to grow up and take a man's job. <laughs> Wait, are you the referee, <laughs> the referee, what the fuck? She, she didn't give a shit about the game. She was watching the cat Super Bowl the whole fucking time. <laughs> she was watching General Hospital while the fucking game was going on. <laughs> oh, shit. Brian, <laughs> Brian Holtzman has arrived to Austin, Texas, and we're going to get to meet brand new comedians and a couple special treats throughout this episode with Brian Holtzman. A bunch of people signed up for tonight. We cut up their names and put them deep in a mason jar. We replaced the uh, bucket of destiny. What happened to the bucket of destiny? Well, our uh, lovely assistant, Zach Bogus, slept in tonight, everybody. If you remember, last week he got his car towed off of 6th Street on a Saturday night. I don't know if you can fathom parking on 6th Street at about 7 p.m. on a Saturday and just thinking, oh, that's good. Just going to leave that there for the night. Like, I mean, the fucking middle of 6th Street. There was literally a Euro stand where his car was. <laughs> anyway, he slept in today. Didn't bring the bucket Are of destiny. Are you kidding me? He works one day a week for two hours a week. <laughs> he slept he's in. Really, he's really... The, the bogus family name is probably not tarnished, though. Like, How <laughs> do you sleep in for a job that starts at 7 p.m.? <laughs> like, it's unbelievable. Uh, But anyway, he didn't bring the bucket, and the ice bucket that we've been using, I've noticed, is, like, gigantic. It's like one of these fucking club buckets. So we got the weed jar. Yeah, it's a little fucking dirty little Austin, Texas mason jar. You know what I'm talking about? We got plenty of those around. Just dig your hand in there, find what you need. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, So, yeah, if I pull your name out of the bucket, a bunch of people sign up. That means you get 60 seconds uninterrupted on this stage. You know your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitten. Yeah, that means wrap it up then or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood. Wait, no, it's not the angry West Hollywood bear. It is the angry warehouse district bear. That never gets a laugh. Austin people don't even know what the gay part of their town is. It doesn't exist. Everybody thinks it's somewhere else. It's it's the homos three doors down from where I live. That's the gay part of town to me. Nobody gives a fuck about the gay part of town here in Austin. Nobody knows. I've said five different places, five different episodes. Everybody's like, ah, I guess that's the gay part. Yeah. What do you guys think is the gay part? Yell it out. Fourth Street. Fourth Street? The East Fourth Street Bear? That's what it would be? East Fourth? West Fourth? 
See how everybody warehouse. disagrees? That's what we just said. Yeah. yeah, that's what we just said. All right. Well. Hey, fuck you! <laughs> Holtzman already yelling at his new neighbors in Oak Hill. It's gonna be trouble. He's gonna. You're gonna catch him tearing the political signs out of your front yard any day now. You're not gay if you lay down when you do it. <laughs> Oh, my God. Is there anything you miss about Los Angeles, Brian? I miss my gay lover. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> what about your... Don't you have a gay son? He has a gay son, yeah. Yeah, I have a gay son. I'm proud of that boy. He, he wins every Little League baseball game there is, steals a base, <laughs> hits a home run, wins every game, and then fucks the weakest player in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ready to start tonight's show or what? It's about to happen right now. I'm sorry, that just, feels like, that just feels like we're at a television taping. Austin, are you guys ready to start tonight's episode of Kill Tony? There you go. You motherfucking... Sleepies. Fucking billy goats out there tonight. Every, everyone's hung over from the Super Bowl or something, right? Yeah, yeah that of, bitch, that bitch referee. That's what I'm fucking <laughs> pissed off about. Nerve of her. I want to be an NFL referee. No, you can't! <laughs> <laughs> Starting out tonight's show, it's a one-word name. I do believe this young lady was on maybe even as recent as last week. Make some noise for your first comedian, Genevieve, everybody. Genevieve. <laughs> Woo! People spread out on the sidewalk have signed up to be on tonight's show. They're socially distant. For those of you listening around the country, everybody that came in tonight was tested. We did rapid testing for COVID. Everybody got tested. Take your time. Totally tested. Here she is, Genevieve, everybody. One more time for Genevieve. What up, y'all? Give it for me. I got an acting gig. Hey! Yeah, I play a zombie in an escape room. <laughs> They basically was like, you get to scare the shit out of white people and nobody calls the cops. I was like, sign me up. So before the show, you get to meet the zombie. This lady came back there to meet me. She's like, this is so cool. I never did anything like this. I said, cut the shit, lady. Which one of these bastards you don't like? She said, what you mean? So all those badass kids out there, which one giving you a hard time? She said, well, Tommy, the redhead. I said, say no more. The bell ring, it's my turn to get out there. I'm like, why? Where the fuck Tommy at? <laughs> I see Tommy, I get him pinned up in the corner, I'm doing spin moves, but he goes, I'm so scared, but she moves like an elegant gazelle. <laughs> said, fuck you, Tommy, that's the best compliment I ever got. I <laughs> uh, got an abortion joke I want to tell real quick. Yeah! 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 Do the one about the <laughs> <laughs> Brian, <laughs> go ahead, Genevieve. Let's hear your uh, abortion show. Okay, well, here's my rape joke. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just playing. No, no, my abortion joke, I do have an abortion joke. Uh, it's not finished. Ooh. <laughs> oh, snap. Gen What's going on, man? Genevieve, ladies and gentlemen, Genevieve. A <laughs> little bit of interruptions there towards the end, but it's okay. You oh, got yeah. through it. Uh, welcome back to the show. Thank Two weeks in a row. Me. Thank you for having me so much. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Weren't you first last week also? I wasn't first, oh, but right. I'm just happy to make it. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Mason Jar has done you well here tonight. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's so fun. Is that real? Yeah, I was an actor. I, was a, I worked in an escape room. It was kind of fucked up because like, I wore chains and I'm black, you know? So it was like, ooh, ooh Harriet oh my, Tubman, oh my not goodness. like this. Were you, the, were you the one trying to escape? Uh, no, they had to escape. I, the chain kept getting longer, and then you had to just, like, go for their ankles, you know, just... Wow, <laughs> that's... And uh, Black History Month, too, made it even worse, huh? Just yeah. being a movie during that time. It was always tough during February. You know, we hear that we're about to take over June for Black History Month instead of February. Did you hear that? I know. You, you guys... I know. It's just like you guys are, can never just be happy with never what you got. Never just be happy, you know? Oh, now we want June, because it snows in February. Uh, <laughs> buh, 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 buh. Stop blacks. shooting Never us. Happened. I mean, the stuff you guys ask for, it's absolutely <laughs> crazy. 
And by you guys, he means women. <laughs> so, Genevieve, how's life gone since last week? Uh, oh, man, it's been crazy. We came down here with another comedian, uh, you know, and uh, we've been making some waves. People have been excited. This has been a great opportunity. I'm Where just are you driving from? Where you I'm from the Dallas area, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Okay, how long? Uh, so you're driving a couple hours each yeah, Monday to do this. Yeah, coming to see you, man. Excited to it. see you. I love it. You're taking the I-35. Oh, yeah, all that traffic and shit. But I'm not complaining because... Uh, uh, no snow. So. Do the cops ever give you a hard time when, you know, you drive by, they th they might think you're a black man and they pull you over? Yeah, they always, I get a, excuse me, sir, <laughs> uh, ma'am, sir, ma'am, sir, sir, ma'am. I get one of those. They're like, I don't know what you are, but you're black, so get out and put your hands up. Yeah, I know. It's like, you know. That's wild. Hey, have you dealt with racist cops here in Texas? Is that in a thing? In Texas, no, but in Wyoming, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah, Wyoming. Yeah, it. Wyoming, they thought I was a prostitute. They said, get out the car. I'm like, for what? I'm driving it. What kind of prostitutes <laughs> do they have in Wyoming? Oh, man, some rough-looking man ones, apparently, because, you know. My goodness. Some people are, have that uh, librarian fetish or something <laughs> like that. I look like I read a hell of a, 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 a thesis. <laughs> Genevieve, did you uh, did you go to college? I did go to college. I went to Michigan State. Go green. Wow, yeah, you're a Spartan. This is Sparta. Wow. You know who else is a Michigan State Spartan is the uh, great Don Barris. Oh, yeah. Both uh, of them oh, come from insane. horrible schools. <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, 360 days a year, Brian Holtzman would be on in the original or in the main room while Don Barris is on in the original room. You guys are the kings of late night. Also, did you know that? I did not. <laughs> also a position uh, at once held at some points by the late, great uh, Brody Stevens. So. Are you just reading Wikipedia shit now? No. <laughs> there he is, here in spirit. Uh, so, Genevieve, what else uh, would we be interested to know about you that we didn't find out last week? I spelled my name wrong for 17 years. Wow. <laughs> One letter. I was off one letter. It was some bullshit. I called my mom. I was devastated. I was like, Ma, where's my E? She said, what the hell are you talking about? I said, my E. It's on my birth certificate. You, you fucked me over on the E. And she said, I told you to spell your name. Well, I want you to spell your name, wow. so fuck it. I'm like, damn. That's kind of fucked up. That's kind of <laughs> fucked up. But, you know, I'm just happy that the light bill ain't in my name no more. So <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she did so good uh, last time that she, we, I invited her yes, this week to. Yes, I've been to wanting the, to reach out and ask about that. Yeah, you this know? Thursday she's going to be opening the show with me, Tony, and Brian Holtzman at Vulcan. At hey! Wow! Yeah! Wow. Right. Hua! Hua! You're on a real show here. So it's all, I saw that it's not a secret location on that last it's flyer that you posted. Vulcan. That's what it's. Yeah, that's it's where Vulcan. It's at? Yeah. Okay, good to know. I would like to know it's not where y'all need to be. It's not really, <laughs> nothing is a secret about his secret show. He just calls it a secret. Is well, that, the that secret? The, except for the secret guest that's supposed to show up. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> I heard about oh. that. It's going to be Bear Man Who Pig. is it? You know who it is. Oh, okay. You'll never believe who it is. Is it <laughs> Lil' Kim? Yep. yep I knew it. Is. I knew it. Which surgery? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm going to guess the fourth surgery here, uh, Alex. No. Uh, Genevieve, do you do anything uh, musically? Yes. Um, I play piano a little bit. I sing a little bit. I was a background, you know, choir singer. You Did know, we have you sing at all last week? No, I danced last week. This will is you turning into a whole will production. Will you sing something for us? This audience, they're a little bit fucking hungover from Super Bowl Sunday. I think a little music would unify us. I got a song that's near and dear to my heart. Baby girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you, let me buy you a drink. I'm T-Pain, you know me. Convict music, nappy boy, ooh-wee. There you go. <laughs> wow. Wow. Damn, the band was just re ready to go. Yeah. They were just trying it's to figure out. It's about getting a girl drunk so you can fuck her. What, what do you think about that female referee? Was that bullshit or what? Would you, you wouldn't do that, would you? Yeah, you are they hiring? Because I referee the shit out of something. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Holtzman. What do you think about Genevieve's set? I, I think I think uh, I think it. Uh, you know, it, it, it really. It, Just say know, it sucks, man. It, Just it, say. It. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 
you know, my point is that great. It was just great. The presentation, the way you, you know you left it all on the stage. Well, even though you're still on the stage, <laughs> when you get off, you'll have left it all on the oh, stage. Oh shit, y'all got to do painting back there. That's some classy shit. Oh shit, we didn't. Even oh play. yeah, that's right. The great Chris Rogers art is uh, drawing something for hey, uh, you know Ryan know Jay that, is hey. drawing there at the viewers at home. Ryan Jay is uh, on the video, but here in person. Chris Rogers is drawing something for Brian Redband. There, way behind, what? Way behind us there. Yeah, I do believe That's so. you? I do think so. He's drawing something Just for so Ryan. There's so many talents There's all so in many, one place. There's so many different revolving pieces of art happening here, and uh, that's, what, uh, that's what's fun. Genevieve, uh, thank you so much. Thank You've you been on so two much. weeks in a row. There she goes. She's seen I appreciate y'all. The letter C, Genevieve. Genevieve, he gives things oh. out. What is that? Is that an ashtray? Jewelry what box. What is that? Fun fact, Brian Holtzman is the only guest in the history of Kill Tony to always give people gifts that get pulled out of the bucket, yeah? <laughs> what was that, Brian? That was a jewelry box, That's am I right, Brian? Good. Wow. That's cool. Very rarely can you get a jewelry box given to you by a professional comedian. That's just one of the... Oh, hey, look who woke up from his nap. It's oh. Zach Bogus, oh, everybody. Wow, it's... Old sleepyhead bogus. My goodness gracious. Nice. Looking like he's it's his first day out of prison. All right. There goes Zach. Your next comedian goes by the name of Raymond Cabrera, everybody. Here we go. Raymond Cabrera. Uh, and and here comes a human being from the back of the room. Yeah, here Live goes. audience, you guys having fun out there, huh? You get it yet? People sign up. Maybe you signed up. Who knows? We've had a few people from the audience get pulled. Oh, awesome. my. Here comes Raymond. Over here. Over here. No, you right got it. Here. No, Over you here. got it. Go that way. <laughs> Holtzman. Holtzman directing people to walk right through the middle of this stage. Just float. Come on, make some noise for Raymond Cabrera, everybody. Hey. Hey, guys. My name's Raymond Cabrera. I'm a one-handed comic, which is very fortunate because it's impossible for me to slip my wrists. <laughs> Any guys, uh... Pretty big in the stock market. That's been a thing coming out. Yeah, I got really excited about the stock market, but I lost a lot of money because I kept hearing about a short squeeze that was happening. And uh, I missed that short squeeze. So now the only short squeeze that's gonna happen is on the trigger of the shotgun that I'm gonna have in my mouth. <laughs> if Blackberry and AMC don't hit $30 a share. Uh, yeah. I live in a new apartment. It's a pretty dope apartment. It's pretty great. I love it. Uh, only problem is there's a bunch of spiders in my apartment. And I used to be afraid of spiders, but then I realized, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing if the spiders bite me. Because worst case scenario, if the spiders bite me, I gain superpowers. Best case scenario, if the spiders bite me, I die. No, not all right. All right, Raymond Cabrera. Yeah. Keep that mic right in front of you there, Raymond. I'm going to yeah. talk with you for a bit. I'm going to ask the question that's on everybody's mind here. Uh, yeah. Why are you wearing your mask the whole time? <laughs> I didn't know what it was like. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, not. You don't want to lose another arm. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? After? How would he lose an arm? You know, from the mass. Yeah. I mean, he already failed at Hints Across America. He ruined that whole entire operation. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Okie dokie, right, old. man? Yeah. Uh, no one knows what that is. Yeah. Right, there's one person. Yeah, so, <laughs> there you go. One old lady <laughs> from Oak Hill got your reference after you said no one knows what that is. All right, uh, Raymond. Um, so what the fuck? Uh, uh. What happened to your hand? Oh, uh, it's it. like the most boring story. I was just born like this. Really? That's it? Yeah. So, you know, like whenever... God, what, what, did, did the hand stay in your mother's vagina or something like that? The other <laughs> well, one? It's like... It's got a little baby arm down there? Such a monster. Yeah. It's kind of like that. 
Heck yeah. Is your favorite barbecue in town Stubbs? Yeah, love it. <laughs> oh, that's the noise they're going to make? Not a laughter, but an O. Oh. What, what are we at, Jerry Springer? Jesus, Austin. This so really is. You're left-handed, I take it, yeah. then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm sad to hear that really happened to you in the stock market. Are you, uh, do, you can, do they consider you diamond hand or paper hand? <laughs> a diamond hand. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, how long you been doing stand up? Uh, about three and a half years. Three and a half years. Yeah. All of it here in Austin, Texas. I started out in Corpus Christi, and then I moved to San Marcos, and then I, uh, I'm in here now. Surprised you're not from Armadillo. <laughs> All right, fuck you guys. What do you, what do you all have one arm out there? Is this all hitting you very in an emotional spot? Anyway. Uh, so what happened with the spiders? Huh? What happened with the spiders? Oh, there were no spiders. Oh, there were no spiders. Are no. you really afraid of spiders? No. Oh, okay. I'm pretty cool with spiders. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, uh, how does the, do you mostly talk about the hand? Was that hard to talk with you about at first when you first started? or? That's how I actually started it off, but then I was like, it's kind of becoming one note, so then I was like, why don't you make up a story, an interesting fucking story? <laughs> <laughs> about, the, about losing the hand? Yeah, yeah. Tell him you're the guy who cut his arm off to get out of the boulder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, make something up. Make yeah. something up. Yeah. Oh, this is the way I came out of my mommy. Come on! <laughs> uh. He does have a really good point. I think that there's, uh, I think that there's something worth, uh, worth noting that perhaps there's, um, there is uh, something there. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister. Is she missing anything? No. No, just straight up. <laughs> yeah. Straight up normal. <laughs> have you ever used the arm f with a woman? You know, like. Got it like L armpit deeper, you know. No, but I've had people who were interested, and yeah. Why oh, would you try? Okay, to? did you did they pay you for something or? No, they're just like older women. And they're just like, they're like, uh, you know. Wanted to know what it's yeah, they're like it just has like the right girth and length. When you did the, uh, yeah. what exactly did that mean? Ah, uh, you know. Just, tits, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I love it, man. I yeah. love it. Uh, do you feel like you would have been? Um, you do you feel like uh, you? What do you think you would talk about if you did have two hands as a stand-up comedian? Uh, clapping. Yeah. That Brian, I think you're <laughs> listening to another podcast what? right now. Right, he's gonna. I, I asked him what he would talk about if he had two hands as a stand-up comedian. Yeah, he would t have like a closing about clapping. Everybody, show him your hands. <laughs> no. Oh. No, I'm just saying. I got yeah. two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Tell us something else interesting about your life, Raymond Cabrera. Uh. I work overnights, so I sleep during the day. Okay. What do you? So does Zach Bogus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. What do you? Uh, what do you do? What do you work night shifts for? What do you do? I'm a barista at the Buzz Mill. Get the fuck out of yeah. here. Really? Yeah. A one-handed barista? Yeah. Can you wow. believe this? I would, yeah. I wouldn't would go to that fucking place. <laughs> I love that. I want my barista with two hands. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> my God. You, you burn yourself a lot? No. No. That's incredible. You yeah. use your chin or something? You guess you just yeah. use that? Yeah. I use, use my chin on, on the, the, the milk frother. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, you know, just figure it out from there. I fucking love it, man. What a, <laughs> what a wild job to have a, uh, you know, I, th I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess yeah. I wasn't expecting barista. I thought maybe yeah. like a, you worked at like a chainsaw factory or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I you mean, would, the place is called the Buzzmill, so it's like. Wow. So that you go in there and you're like, be careful. It's crazy in here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. Like the saws aren't just for decoration. My goodness. Yeah. Have you ever thought about getting one like one of those like prosthetic arms, you know, like with the, the Robocop shit? I've tried to, but uh it's just Ro like it's Robocop. more Robocop. What are your eighties references tonight? What is happening? <laughs> Come with on. You? you guys know. Did you just walk out of a time capsule? Everyone or something? knows what the fuck Robocop is. What are you talking about? <laughs> she uh, knows what Robocop Oak Hill is. knows who <laughs> Robocop is. Robocop's popular. Yeah. I love it. Have you thought about getting a prosthetic? I've thought about it, but it's just like 
it's more helpful for people who actually like lost their hand versus somebody who's never had one. Right. So it's oh, just like oh, that's bull. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, take I've ne- the fucking other hand. I've never known what it's Why like. Why would to have you want to have hand. two hands if you couldn't have two hands? Oh. You're full of shit, man. <laughs> you get a hand on Amazon nowadays. I probably yeah. Raymond, I love your style, man. You have, uh, you know, you have a fucking uh, great, great stage presence up here. You, I love that you talk about, you know, what's obvious and what's right in front of you. Um, thank so you. thank you so much for signing up. Yeah, I don't you. trust. Appreciate you. it. Holy shit! Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Raymond Cabrera. Oh, he's getting a picture. Wow. wow. He's gonna hang that on his wall. What is that picture of? Good luck holding a nail and a hammer at the same time, Raymond. Luck, lucky, lucky it wasn't a pair of gloves. <laughs> wow, you can't get a prosthetic, prosthetic arm on Amazon. Look at the chunky sanitizer Zach Bogus is spraying down with today. Very clumpy. How many of you have already had the coronavirus by round of applause, huh? That's a pretty good amount of the audience. Can't catch it twice. That's yeah, what you can. Say. 29 people in the world have caught it twice. Your next comedian goes by the name of Benjamin Sefron. Benjamin Sefron. That's 29 reasons that you're wrong, then. Benjamin has. What? <laughs> That's 29 reasons that you're wrong. Benjamin, well, yeah, but, do you have two legs and two arms, Benjamin? Do you have all your body parts? Yeah, but those people have debilitated immune systems. Mm. Luckies. People oh. like that, people like that don't here? go out. Wow, be sure to use the staircase, everybody. Normally, I don't have to explain that because it's sort of common sense. But hey, here's one more time for B- B- Benjamin Sefron. Close enough. Sefton. You can take off your mask, Benjamin. Oh, we put it back on, Benjamin. Put it back. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. One more time for Benjamin Sefron, everybody. Here he goes. Sorry, I must have been on mute. <clears throat> hey, do we have any armed forces in the house? Soldiers? Army? Any soldiers? No? Respect our troops, guys. <laughs> um, well, if, if there was one, what I was going to ask is, Do soldiers like Soldier Boy? Can you believe that guy went to jail? What happens if Soldier Boy gets his rights violated? He contacts the ACLU! (laughs) You know, I like to think Soldier Boy went to jail and came out a Soldier Man. (laughs) But, But better, I like to imagine Soldier Boy being trained by Soldier Man in Paratraining Academy. <laughs> Who's next? Yes, you! Superman! Splat. Make sure to read the training material. Benjamin Sephiron, everybody going to the bear tonight. Nobody wanting to get out on their own accord. Everybody trying to get that last laugh in tonight. <laughs> Benjamin, I've always said there are not enough Soldier Boy themed comedians. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there you are, out of nowhere. Uh, hell yeah. Welcome to the show, Benjamin. This Thank is your you. first time here, right? I've never watched it. Never watched it. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's not even the answer I, to I, the I question. Put it, I put it on like. That's, a, that's not right what I asked I you, Benjamin. Here. Do you know that? <laughs> huh? Do you know that's not what I asked you? I, I'm a bad listener. I'm sorry. Okay, let's try again. Okay. This is your first time on the show, right? Yes. Do you do a lot of uh, stand-up comedy? Uh, I've, I've been uh, hitting it this year pretty hard. Hitting uh, it this year pretty this hard. This is my seventh year in total. Seven years you've been doing stand-up comedy. Yeah. Okay, that, that, there's the answer. All right. <laughs> and uh, you all of it here in Austin? I never lived outside of Travis County in my whole life. Never lived outside Travis County your whole life. How long have you been having sex with the Thousand Pound Sisters? Um, I've seen you on that show numerous times. You drive them around. You give them their two liters of Pepsi to start the day. I watch that show. I know who you are. As often as they want, man. They're in charge. I love it. (laughs) 
Um, what so made you funny. sign up for this tonight? How did you know to come here? A friend told you, or um, just you know, generally stalking people online, find shit to do. Generally stalking. <laughs> Were you stalking someone that was coming here? I don't think so. I don't know. Just You're a creep, dude. <laughs> yeah, really, really, really frightening energies. Uh, Good to, I'm glad you're here, though. It's good to get the people, you know. You see them in the YouTube comments, but you never get to meet them in real life. Right. <laughs> I think we're all, we're all thinking, you know, I wish you were the one with the one arm. Yes. <laughs> not the other guy, you know. It's like the Wizard of Oz episode. This one was born Can without a brain. Back? All right, Benjamin, what do you do for work? What gas station do you work at? I don't work. What? I don't work. You don't work? I don't work. You have disability? <laughs> yeah, I'm on disability. For what? Uh, being fucking awesome. Uh, uh, no one's believing that. Uh, <laughs> you gonna you gonna keep your disability secret? Um, it's a mental illness. A mental illness. So they say. Okay, no, I believe that, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna interject it into the interview part. We know that it's a mental illness, Benjamin. Uh, but mm. if you don't want to talk about it, I guess we won't. God, it's I'll tell you schizophrenia, all. ladies it and gentlemen. It's the only one that it could be. It's the only one that they sort of want to keep secret from you, and they're in a uh, position of control. So, Benjamin, uh, what uh, what's your life like? You live with your parents? What's going on? Uh, I own a house that I bought. Uh, oh, wow, you yeah. bought a house with yeah. disability money. Well, no, Fucking I Texas I is crazy, wow. people. <laughs> I, 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 had, I had a job at one point. Oh, okay, yeah. what was your job? Um, I was a uh, system administrator for AT&T. Assistant administrator? System administrator. System administrator for AT&T. Yep. Fuck yeah. And then what happened? One day you got electrocuted. Well, I fucking, um, you know, I had a bad day at work. Um, I called my dad. He was like, that seems weird. You need to go back to the mental hospital. And, I, you know, so. Can you describe to us <laughs> what a bad day like that goes like? I mean, I'm sure these well, people would be interested sure. uh, during this interview yeah. to find out about things what, like that. What made me finally snap after six years was I was now leading a team that was responsible for finding 2,000 laptops that had been shipped all over the country and Talk had right no to the tip of that. You were trying had to no GPS location? You were working for a team that had to find 2,000 <laughs> laptops. That were shipped all over the country, and we did no um, like GPS or like location tracking. So they were gone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> you lost 2,000 laptops at once. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Slowly, one at a time. You know, <laughs> you, so <laughs> you sold laptops. You like, stole like, laptops and you I sold them. If I ship some guy a laptop to go fix a Four Seasons, and then you know it's three years later, I don't know where the laptop is. What, where's your cool. house at? What part of town is your house at? Um, well, I grew up on East Roadburg. I bought a house on West as soon as I could afford it. You talk really fast sometimes. <laughs> what was the last thing you said? <laughs> I, I grew up on East Roadburg. I bought a house on West as soon as I could afford it. Bought a house out west as soon on as West Runberg. West Merns Meadow. I, okay, forget it. Forget <laughs> it. This is one of those. This is one of those interviews where just not much is happening here. Uh, Benjamin, you good at anything? You have any special skills or talents? You know how to like uh, balance a ball off the tip of your nose like that up in the air? Or Finish something? a bag of cocaine real quick. <laughs> I do magic tricks. Yeah? Can you do a magic trick for us now? You wanna, do you need yeah. something? What, yeah. can, what can you do? I, I want you to think of a card. Okay, I'm okay. thinking of it. Now tell everybody. Okay, but if I do that, then you'll know the card. Okay, well, let me guess. Okay. Ace of spades. Very close. Okay. It was the ace of diamonds. Wrong. Oh, yeah. There Jesus it is. Christ. Men mental illness indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, it has been confirmed. I don't know if your doctors did this, but sometimes we do it here on Kill Tony. We do diagnosis live. It's the only <laughs> podcast where you can actually see this happen. Some of the perks of pulling names out of a uh, bucket. <laughs> All right, Benjamin. You did it. You got on the show. Congratulations. There he goes. Where's Benjamin Sephron, everybody. Make some noise for Benjamin. He gets a mug. No, take the mug. Take the mug. You're going that way, Benjamin. 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 Take the mug. There goes Benjamin <laughs> Sephron. Wow. Holtzman. What the f Now, Holtzman will fuck. take off your jacket <laughs> if you try to walk away from him without taking a gift. Benjamin Sephron, everybody. Get some help, man. Get some help, please. This is a compelling episode so far. These are your people, Austin, Texas. Make some noise if... You're happy of the city that you live in right now. Look at that. You cannot break their pride. 
They are happy. <laughs> the guy's got his own house. You got to give him credit for that. A lot of mentally, a lot of mentally ill people here in town just live under a bridge. Not this guy. Pulled another name out of the bucket. She's gotten on the show a couple times. She's back. A local artist runs a lot of her own shows. Here she is. It's Brittany Ledesma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I believe this is her third episode of Kill Tony. She's great. Since we made the move here to Austin, Texas. Runs her own show out of a uh, makeshift garage I bar. She, I heard she runs a few shows, actually. Yeah. I did it. I did her show. Yeah? Yeah, a couple Wednesdays ago. Me, David Lucas, a bunch of us went over there. Here she is, everybody. Make some noise for Brittany Ledesma. Someone told me they wanted to wait to have sex with me, so it would be like more meaningful. I was caught off guard, like what kind of game is that? I'm less attractive than the more you get to know me. If you're there by the third date, that's a red flag from you to me that I should leave. I was talking about red flags with my friends, and I told them I don't have any except the Confederate one in my bedroom. <laughs> I've been running into a lot of people from high school recently, but that's just a sad reminder to me that I didn't get to live out the all-American high school experience because I never got to go through a school shooting. <laughs> um, God. <laughs> I was looking at med spas the other day, but then I realized it was just the leukemia ward at St. Jude's. Does anyone know if you can get chemo without having cancer? I'm just trying to lose my last five pounds. Uh, my mom's a cancer survivor. She's had it three times. Unfortunately, nothing can kill evil. Thank you. Brittany Ledesma doing jokes one after the other. Oh, yeah. With the microphone up to her mouth, looking out in the audience. It's been, uh, it's been uh, almost uh, <laughs> since the beginning of the episode that we've had something like that happen here. <laughs> almost, it almost seems strange having someone come right, up and do stand-up comedy that they wrote and thought of. Uh, that doesn't end in you. <laughs> Brittany Ledesma, welcome back to the show. Thank you. You do a lot of stand-up here in Austin, Texas. You run shows. Tell us how life's been lately. Life's been good, you know. Uh, I took an edible the other night, and that was a lot for me. But what happened? <laughs> I what? just stared at my dog for a while. Oh, I don't know good. if it liked me or not. I'm sure it does. I, <laughs> I feel a lot better now, thank you. My goodness gracious. What do you think of, uh, have you been watching tonight's episode? Have you had a view of it at all? Yeah, I've gotten to watch a little bit of it. Uh-huh. That last guy didn't get Watch it. out for that guy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he tried to give me a rose before I came in here. Oh. I just, uh, my friends asked if I even, like, noticed it, but I'm just not good at ignoring people now. Wow. Yeah. A rose. That's a rare treat. I know. <laughs> That's good. While you were staring at your, uh, was it a cat? Is that what dog. you said? You were staring at your dog the other day. He was probably staring at you through your window. <laughs> so, Brittany, tell us something about you that we haven't, uh, that we haven't learned in all these other interviews that uh, we've had. I used to be a dancer. Really? What, what type of dancer were you? Um, like the pole. Really? <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, I used to work at a strip club. No what did you do shit. at a strip club? I was a stripper. Get the <laughs> fuck out of wow. here. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, I was like 19. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> 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 I can smell stripper a mile away. <laughs> you seem so young. How old are you, Brittany? Uh, I just turned 23. You're 23? Uh, how, oh. oh, wow. how long were you a stripper for? Uh, like a year oh. when I was 19. Wow, a year. Would you be willing yeah. if we played some um, if we played some stripper music? Would you be willing to uh, just give us a small example of like your types of moves or something? I'm sure the crowd would like that. Am I right, guys? Instead of leaving me hang. <laughs> Whoa, Holtzman, Holtzman, Holtzman! Don't throw it I'm so hard, those. Jesus. Holtzman is beaming. Uh, oh wow, those are five dollar bills. I know. I mean, <laughs> bands will make... That's more than one dance, actually. Bands yeah, that, will make That's a dance. private show. Maybe you should go behind the curtain and... Uh... Red band. No, I think Zach's giving y'all a show when he cleans us. He goes all the way Guys, down Guys, can you hole. play some strip club music for uh, Britney since uh, Red Band didn't cue any up? 
Oh shit. Sure. Little soldier boy. <laughs> wow, this no. is the this is the first in Kill Tony history. This is an actual former stripper. I can't combining the two worlds. Fuck the comedy. Fuck the comedy. Oh my god. Combine. Show us the whole. I, I can do the splits and that's about it. I'm not good at dancing by any means, and I have clothes constraining me. But I, I okay. used to climb up to the pole and then go down. Like that wow. from the top of it. Oh my Man. god. She squirted all over the ground. She did not, Brian. So Brittany, let me ask you this. That's so interesting. So you used to do that, and we also yeah. found out don't you have like a what don't you have a disease or something like that? You have Crohn's? IBS. <laughs> you do? You have IBS? Yeah. Did you interject that into your stripper style? Like was it like now, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, here she comes, slippery when wet. <laughs> oh my God, no! I here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Doo Doo Jenkins, everybody, uh, coming to the stage. Give her a tip or a piece of toilet paper. Come on. <laughs> There's Red Band's fart noise for the episode, everybody. That's exactly how it went in VIP. <laughs> wow. You can <laughs> shit all over me any day, honey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Holtzman's into that type of stuff. Did you ever uh, do anything extra for, you know, a couple of huns? I, no. I mean, I had, like, guys ask if they could sniff me, so they, like, sniffed my leg. It was like Joe Biden's thing, wow. too, apparently. But it's true. People did pay money to be sniffed. Yeah, I just did. Let or, yeah. No, Brian, you I don't sniff that. I just gave it a money. Don't sniff it, Brian. Someone don't paid me 20 bucks for me to just show them my tongue. Really? There's a tongue fetish in the world. Wow, that is interesting. Yeah. How much did the guy pay to sniff your leg? Like a hundred bucks. What part of your leg was it? Like wow, it, the lower, below the whoa. knee. I would think that's about a ten dollar sniff. <laughs> I think above the knee goes into twenty, right? Ooh. Was there something that made you get out of it? Like, was there a bad night? Why didn't you go into like camming or something? Or I mean, what's your cam address? I was just uh, red band. <laughs> I was just in school at the time, and it's all I needed to get back my transcript from it before I Absolutely. transferred. Absolutely. What was your stripper name? Uh, April. April? Oh, oh my God. April goodness. Shower. Oh. <laughs> Come on, everybody. It's April. It's, getting, have, a, it's getting a little stormy in here, everybody. Yeah. Do, do you have to poo right now? Do you have to poo right now? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel like taking a shit right now? Just let me know. I'll meet you out after. <laughs> Shit on my mouth. <laughs> this is kill Tony. Kill me with your shit. Holtzman kill has me arrived. kindly with your shit. Holtzman has arrived in Austin, Texas. Young 22-year-old poo. I mean, that's fresh shit. That is, uh, that is uh, more youthful shit than, it, I don't know. than an like age older than that. turning a faucet on in Flint. Do you think you could ever go back to doing that? No. <laughs> What about uh, for like a hundred bucks? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Absolutely disgusting. Uh, Brittany, a y unbelievable uh, set tonight. I'd venture to say this might even be your best set on this show. Fun stuff. Way to roll with the punches during this crazy interview part. Answered all the questions. Very compelling stuff. Uh, so thank you so much. There thank she goes, you. Brittany Ledesma. She's on social media at Brittany with one T L E D. Brittany. Oh, look at that. She got a doll. A very cool know. Asian doll from oh, Brian Holtzman. Is that Janice? He's now picking up one of the $5 bills that he <laughs> threw at her. Uh... <laughs> Hell yeah. Guys, how about a big hand for the band, am I right? Such okay. a cool vibe in here tonight. Powerful music. Mohammed Abba, or Abs, or Ab8. Mohammed, if your name is Mohammed, you just got selected to be next on Kill Tony, live in Austin, Texas, with Brian Holtzman's arrival amongst us. Here comes Mohammed, everybody. Hold up here, you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> with a 60 seconds uninterrupted, here he is, Mohammed. Ah. Thank you, thank you. I am proof that Jesus is white. Good job, Christians. You guys really nailed it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, 
Yeah, I do go by Muhammad, Mo, no fly list, like those cute little names. Um, but yeah, I don't really follow my religion. Any sinners in here? Yeah, Slayer! Slayer! They call that devil's music. I call them hymns. Um, but yeah, I don't really follow my religion anymore. But uh, I do uh, hook up with older women because Muhammad uh, married an older woman. So, for example, in eighth grade, I tried to hook up with a girl. She turned me down, and I hooked up with her mom. So, uh, yeah, why could mess with the product when you can go straight to the source? So. <laughs> so. But, yeah, I do hook up with girls my age. Uh, they're into pulling hair and uh, choking, like, everybody else in this modern day and age. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll just stop right there. Okay. <laughs> I'll allow that. What is your last name, Mohammed? Abbott. Abbott. Yeah, Abbott. Oh. A-B-B-E-D. Abbott. Abbott. Yes. Okay, Mohammed Abbott. What is that? What ethnicity are you? Uh, I'm Palestinian. Palestinian. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Palestinian music that Red Band had queued up for you. <laughs> uh, have you ever been there? Uh, yeah, I was there um, like freshman to sophomore year summer for what's two a, months. What's it like? A war, is it a war zone? Uh, it was nice, and then, yeah, uh, I would wake up to gunshots and a uh, grenade going off. So Crazy, huh? Yeah, my cousin uh, stole a military-grade like gas mask and a uh, mace one time, and he was nice. just fucking firing it off. Hell yeah. So, just yeah. A, it's always sunny in Palestine. <laughs> Another episode. <laughs> How long have you lived in Texas? Uh, I'm from Chicago. I'm visiting. Okay. So, yeah. How long are you visiting for? Uh, until tomorrow morning. Have you noticed Texans treat you a little bit differently than people in Chicago? Uh, yeah, really nice. Yeah. They're really nice here. They are. It's fucking wild. They're really nice because they, they see you and they don't hear your name and they assume you're just a white guy. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> you don't seem very Mohammed-y until... Uh, until you uh, talk about it. Yeah. Like, take yeah. off your hat for a second, if you don't mind. Yeah, look at that. I wouldn't have guessed. I guess you're a little suspicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We might check your bags. We might <laughs> right. just check it. Something set it off. It might be uh, t more than two ounces of liquid. You know, we're just going to give it a quick glance. Uh, is it tough for you to fly? You get stopped a lot? Uh, actually, no. Really? Yeah, they just see my name, oh, and they're just like, oh. It's too obvious. We'll yeah. change that. <laughs> oh, he's writing down your name. Look at that. He's going to send it in to his buddies at uh, TSA. <laughs> so what do you do for work? Uh, I'm a food lab uh, scientist. What does that mean exactly? So, I, Well, I'm in quality control, so I just pretty much all the, like, uh, the finished goods and like candies and beverages, I just check them out. Do you try sure them? Do you taste yeah. them? Oh, basically, Red Band does that yeah. for a living, hey. too. <laughs> what do you think about Pete Terry's? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Have you eaten anything to good since uh, being uh, here? Terry Blacks. Terry Blacks, yeah, all the way. That's amazing. where. Uh, by the way, that's who uh, I forgot to mention. That's who fed us tonight. Terry Blacks Barbecue, seriously, one yeah. of the best in the uh, one of the best in all of Austin, if not the best. That's from um, Terry Blacks underscore BBQ. Thanks to our buddy Yoni over at Best BBQ Show on all social media. Make sure you follow these guys. Uh, uh, huge, huge pieces of the team. So, Muhammad, tell us more about your life. What else about you? Do you uh, have a girlfriend up in Chicago? I do not. Okay. I'm single. What type so of girls are you into? You're a Palestinian. What do um, Pretty what much, I would say, like, curvy girls. I like curvy Ooh, girls. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you like a girl cleanly shaven or a Gaza Strip? <laughs> <laughs> I knew a Palestine joke Somebody would go well. <laughs> Two girl. people know about global affairs here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> stupid I like clean. Kill Tony fans. Like, I would say <laughs> a woman who can hide a bottle of explosives, perhaps. No, a little bit, I guess. A hulking a woman <laughs> who can really hide that fucking bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get on an airplane with this motherfucker? That's what I want to know. What's your favorite part of the girl? Her boobs or her butt? A uh, butt. I'm a butt guy. Butt all the way, yeah. right? A little bit of For that sure. rear end. Definitely. For sure. Uh, your, if, if your most recent girlfriend, was she American? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she was. Just a normal white girl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's dead now, isn't she? Yeah, she's probably, yeah. Have you ever dated no. a Jewish girl? Uh, I've hooked up with a Jewish girl. What did that feel like? Was there, uh, like, friction in between you guys? Did one yeah, of you just pull out a gun at some point? Yeah, and just it was a huge, weird conflict, and we never resolved I love you, it, I hate so. you, I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you, I hate you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you people are. <laughs> You're not fooling me. Uh, do you notice that uh, you naturally don't like Jewish people? 
no, it's not that. No. Uh, How about well, your father? I mean, How about your father? Uh, yeah, you know. You no. Know uh, <laughs> uh, you got an idea. <laughs> yeah, so no, he doesn't like Jewish uh, people. It's, it's on and off. It's a weird relationship. Mostly with off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about I'd say Zionist, more Zionist than Okay, Jews, how so. about your mom? Same thing? Yes. Yeah, Both thing. are Palestinian? Yeah. Why do you think you came out so white? Uh, they're, they look white, too, so I have no idea. All my cousins are, like, dark complexion and olive, at least, mm-hmm. but mm. look at I you. was the lucky ones, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. how, how'd you get a okay. job testing food? Uh, I went to school for biochemistry. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to be a, a dentist, an orthodontist, and I was like, fuck that. And then right. I wanted to be a meat scientist. A meat scientist? Yeah, my family owned a, uh, a, owned a, uh, slot ha- a slaughterhouse. Your family owns a slaughterhouse? Yeah, they Holy did. Holy shit. So, yeah, wow. I would help out. Mostly Jewish? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was halal, so it was nice. Right. Uh, wow. Right. But, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. How about you? Anything that you like to do other than... Uh, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, just over a year. Just over a year. Yeah. Other than stand-up comedy, what else do you like to do to pass the time? Uh, I play, uh, play video games, uh, yoga. Hey, and, Jews. Uh, yeah, that's... Yep. What, do you, what type of video games? What are we talking about? Flight, uh, like, flight simulator? No. I know you're into that. You're just restarting every five minutes? Uh <laughs> Uh, I'll pick uh, New York City on this one. Uh, <laughs> no. I'm into, uh, like, shooters, uh, mostly fighting games and uh, RPGs. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. I fucking love it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what? Uh, who's your favorite stand-up comedian? Hmm, Tony yep. Hinchcliffe. Uh, no, uh, that's, no okay, that's, yeah. that's pandering. Uh, there you go. I would say that's tough. <laughs> I have a Mount Rushmore. What was, th- what was that noise? <laughs> that was... Ryan Holtzman <laughs> doing the kiss the ass sound effect from his... Who'd you say? Chappelle? Uh, I, yeah, I have a Mar- Mount Rushmore, so it's like Chappelle, uh, Patton Oswalt, um, Dave Chappelle, and Tom Segura. Wow, you said oh. Chappelle twice. Oh, I'm Very sorry, yeah. Louis C.K., I'm sorry. Okay. Rest in peace. No, but that's great. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, he didn't yeah. do anything wrong. No. <laughs> that's, that's Tom Segura after breaking his arm. <laughs> All right, Mohammed, so much yeah. fun. Congratulations, you oh, got yeah. pulled. Anything else for Mohammed? I, uh, I want to know, do you prefer blowing up bridges or buildings? Um. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> was there actually any food that you uh, like, tested that you, like, there was like, something that happened, like, oh, shit, we can't get these Tootsie Rolls out? They, they, uh... Uh, yeah, there was one where uh, a company... Ford, like they uh, adulterated some mint with corn mint and they got in a huge trouble. That was it. It's nothing what? too exciting. What's corn mint? Corn mint can be like a substitute for peppermint. So it can be, it's just a cheaper thing. That's uh, all. Oh, okay. They tried That's to go shady, it. but they didn't say that they did it in their ingredients. Yeah. But you tasted it. Yeah, I tasted it. If you had wow. a it, tasted, it was weird. It tasted like gasoline. So. Wow. wow. Yeah. And you like that shit, don't you? Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to do with explosives. You just eat that <laughs> shit up. Yeah. I hope you don't hang around the front of this fucking club after you get off stage. <laughs> there, there aren't any famous Palestinian comedians. Am I correct? Um, no, I can't think of any. It's incredible. You're, yeah. you, you could be on your path to being the first one. Ladies and oh, gentlemen, Mohammed Abbott. There he goes. Thanks his Keltoni debut. He's on social media. M-O-T-O-R-I-O-U-M-O-E. There he goes. Wow, look at that. Some socks. Absolutely, hell yeah. There's going to be some fucking dynamite shoved in those things on a plane ride. Everyone could have used some good black socks. Heck yeah, absolutely. Look at this. Look who's just spraying down everybody in the front row right now. It's like, a, it's like the Gallagher of mic changers. You know, you could spray the rag and just wipe yeah. it. Yeah. That works Zach awesome. Bogus. Doing his job like the kind of guy that sleeps in for his job. <laughs> Pull another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Anthony Zamora. Anthony Zamora. There might be not enough Anthony. We might need Samora. So we got Anthony Zamora. He's making that, his way to the Italian stage. Name, you think? Yeah. Yeah. Could be, could be Latino, but Anthony's Italian. We're gonna see what happens here. Here he is, Anthony Zamora. This is my first time. I just go and just like, 
I got fired from work today, y'all. Inappropriate behavior is what they called it. Uh, <laughs> oh, I spent the first 20 minutes of work on YouTube looking up black people react to magic tricks. <laughs> they, they didn't like that. They didn't like that shit at all. <laughs> So now, it's, so now it's fucked up though because like I don't have a job and like my girlfriend's just trying to be like, well, just you know, just like move in with me, you know, move in with me. And I'm like, I'm I'm not trying to live in with your parents though. <laughs> be weird when I'm bringing other women home. I gotta explain that to your mom. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I love her. I love her, but she's a little. She's getting more and more kinky the more we've we've dated. Uh, I came home from work the other day, and she had P. Terry's waiting for me on the table. And she told me that she wanted me to come on the fries, just all over the fries so she could eat them. Which is weird, right? Because like, usually you come on the side so you can dip it like a normal fucking person. Yeah, Anthony Zamora, in and out, right before the bear came in. What a set. Fuck yeah. Congratulations. Thank you you thank did you, it, you. believe it or not. He's shocked. He's shocked that that's what works in this room. That's uh, It's amazing what jokes wow. actually do. Uh, <laughs> Anthony, welcome. How old are you? I'm um, 24. 24 years old? Yeah, you had to wow. ask me that. What? I said you had to ask me that. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah. 24. Okay. Okay. You going to do that with every question? <laughs> You're going to say you had to ask me that? Well, he had to think of the ID that he was given. That know? was true. <laughs> I love this. I, I love your look, man. You look like you're wearing like a Richard Nixon Halloween mask or something like that. Uh, really interesting face on you, like if Ray Romano had a baby with a sea monkey or something like that. Really. Does it come off? <laughs> I've tried. Uh, Pull it from the bottom. <laughs> so how long you been dating this girl of yours? Uh, she doesn't exist. Wow, look at that. Make believe. Make believe. Was, but the P. Terry's part was true, huh? Yeah, no, that was, yeah. Anthony, we were talking about it on your way to the stage. We were trying to uh, guess what ethnicity you are, and as uh, you've got closer, I'm guessing, uh, more Latino than Italian? Correct, yeah. Right, like Correct. 100%? Yeah, 100%. Mexican. Mexican. There it is. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you do for work? Sales. Sales, what are you selling? Uh, what are you trying to buy? Wow, look at that. <laughs> He's a drug dealer, everybody. Oh, my up? goodness. Like a little, <laughs> like a, like, like a little Play-Doh version of Scarface over here. <laughs> uh, what do your parents do for work? We're going to do a little a segment of the show that we call Same Noise. Ooh, how Mexican are you? <laughs> what do your parents do? Uh, my dad works for BP. There you go. That's pretty good. A gas station. We'll call that a gas station. <laughs> How about your mom? What does your mom do? She works at the church. She works at the church as Mexican as it gets. That's pretty Mexican, yeah. That's bonus level Mexican. For uh, real. Who does the landscaping at your uh, home? Oh, they don't own a house. It's an apartment. <laughs> oh, shit. Super Mexican. <laughs> wow. How many people live in the apartment? Just them. Oh, just the two of just, them? Just two of them. You live by yourself? Yeah. Wow, okay. That doesn't make any sense there. That's, that's Jewish music, everybody. Uh, how long have you lived by yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I have, I have a roommate, but yeah. Wait, what? I have a roommate. Oh, you have a roommate? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what does your roommate do? Uh, same job. Sales. Wow. Look at that. You guys are just selling things. Just selling. Fuck yeah. You guys selling are like things. the chupacabras of Wall Street. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to do for fun, Anthony? Uh, anything outside. That's why I love Austin. Hiking, really? He just biking. loves being outside as a Mexican as it gets. And da, 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 da. <laughs> Have my birthday at the park, exactly. Yeah. Birthday at the park. Everybody, everybody feel free to sing along after he does each uh, Mexican thing. This is incredibly Mexican. What do you think is the most Mexican thing about you? Mm, shit, I don't know. Um, oh, my grito. I don't even know what that means. Hey, can do it. All right. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. He got, look at that. The Mexican drummer, Michael Gonzalez, got so excited that he did it with him 
He literally could not help himself. These people are their own type of aliens. Even the white ladies, even the Karens from Oak Hill are excited right now. Look at this. They hear a Latino guy doing that weird cry thing that they do. But, but It's like you... every Mexican guy is always getting like raped before each <laughs> song. Can you, can you do the Mexican whistle? What's that? What's that? Oh, what no. It, no, no one, is, this, is, this, is this another early oh, wait, 80s he can? reference? Do it. Do the Mexican whistle. Come on, do it. Fucking do it. Do the fucking whistle. Do the fucking whistle, dude. We're going to wait all day. You got to do it. Nope, you're, you got to do it. Your girl is saying that you know exactly what she's Just do the fucking whistle. There's no way she's lying right now. It's weirder that you're lying about not being able to do the whistle <laughs> than it would be. All right, that's not a fucking thing, dude. Get these people out of here. I want them kicked out. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Anthony, so let's talk about it. Why do you think you don't have a girlfriend? Oh, that's a good question. When's the last time you went on a date? December. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What happened in December? Let's talk about it. You were on a, you're on a dating app? What kind of a... Whose profile picture were you using? <laughs> <laughs> the one on the ID. Uh... Wait, which question do you want me to answer first? <laughs> uh, tell me about the date. The date? It was went, it went. off a dating app? No, 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 no. I, uh, I met her just going out, doing stand-up. So met her at a bar. Oh, okay. She's a comedian? No, no, no. She liked comedians, though. She was just a fan? Just a fan. Groupie. Yeah, okay. Chuckle fucker. I like it. So what, what chuckle happened? chuckle fucker, is that it? Stick with me over here, Fantastic. Anthony. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so what happened? After the show, she came up to you? No, I went up to her. Okay, and what did you say? Give us all give us all an example of what uh, being worked over by a guy like Anthony Zamora sounds like. You go up to her and right into that microphone, what'd you say to her? Hello. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How Even my pussy dried up after that. <laughs> and then what'd she say? Hello. And then what'd you say? Nice to meet you. Jesus Christ, Anthony. <laughs> wow, what was the move that worked for you? What'd you guys end up doing that night? Did you take her back to... Uh, oh, yeah, we fucked, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Did, yeah. How'd you do that? Your place or hers? My place. Okay. Where was your roommate? Oh, uh, he wasn't there. Wow. Look at that. So he was holding her down, wasn't he? <laughs> Where'd you have sex with her? The living room, kitchen, your bedroom? Oh, my bedroom. Okay. Yeah. And how does that happen? You let her in there, and then what? You guys are already making out? Or, like, how does that happen? No, we... You guys started in the living room, worked your way to the bedroom. Did you go? Did you watch? Are you pr not pretend like with stick with me, Anthony. <laughs> stick with me, Anthony. You pretended like you were gonna watch a movie, perhaps, or something like that. Like how? Did, what happened in no, the bedroom? No, we did. We just had a good time. We were drunk, so we just went straight to the bedroom. Damn. Did you make out before the bedroom? Oh, uh, when we were in the bedroom, yeah. The question is, <laughs> Jesus, this is a weird. It's a wonky one. You're tonight. taking it here. I don't know. <laughs> did you make out before the bedroom or not until the bedroom? Oh, okay. No, we made out before. Yeah. Where? Uh, at the restaurant. Wow, what re wow. super Mexican, by the way, if you could please. Making out in restaurants. Ba, 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 ba. Super Mexican. What restaurant mm. was it? <laughs> no, it was like off of Cesar Chavez, like where the Pearl Street used to be. <laughs> the only street Actually, they like yeah. to take. You'll never see Latinos on second or third. No way. If they're going <laughs> east and west, they're taking Cesar Chavez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Relax, Anthony. Relax. <laughs> so uh, just some restaurant in Cesar Chavez. So you're making out at the restaurant. You guys are uh, sitting next to each other in like a booth, or are you sitting across from one another? Oh, the old table lean just dripping your spit right into the bowl of queso underneath you. It wasn't a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. What's out of, of your box? What kind of restaurant did you guys go to? <laughs> it was uh, Italian. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. She's Mexican too? No, white. Really? <laughs> wow. Look at that. <laughs> Fuck yeah. My goodness. <laughs> All right, Anthony. Well, it's fun learning uh, your game. So you had sex with her in your bedroom. What's that like? Condom? No condom? A uh, condom. First okay. time condom. Maybe. Okay, first time condom. Ooh, the oh. Karens from Oak Hill actually wow, clap. They They're very proud of you. <laughs> They're thinking that perhaps their own children might be so uh, <laughs> might be so uh, uh, sanitary to use a condom when they're having sex. 
but we know white people don't do that. Uh, Latinos have to use condoms because they make babies immediately. Um, fertile. <laughs> Very fertile. The rabbits. Whistler knows what I'm talking about. How many kids do you two have? Like four, four. Four kids. Thank you. I have a question. Do you have any posters <laughs> hanging in your bedroom? Oh, yeah. What, wow, what's what your posters? posters? <laughs> Good question, Red Band. Cesar Chavez. <laughs> You're kidding me. Is it really? Yeah, the United Workers. Are you workers, fucking serious? The United Workers Front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you fucking joking? I'm not. You really have a poster, and it's <laughs> not framed, is it? No. <laughs> Hell no. And do you have a Jesus candle next to it? That thing's just nah. right up there. That Caesar Chavez, no frame, just raw dog in the yeah, wall. Yeah, fuck you. Hell yeah. What other posters do you have? I know you have more than one. Uh, me the white one. parents are most disappointed <laughs> that your picture's not framed. <laughs> <laughs> she said I'm you exactly can, I don't right. know how to frame it. If you can show me, you have a very... Just go to a store. Yeah. You can build a frame. There he goes, Anthony Zamora, everybody. He did jokes. The crowd loves him. Great interview. Great job, Anthony. Fuck yeah. Whoa. Look who just got a new alligator skin hat. And a shot glass. From he Brian Holtzman. Wow. Brian Lyon... Brian oh, really that looks good on him. Guy. Wow, he put the hat right on. Anthony Zamora, you got to come up. Come back, sign up again, Anthony. Definitely. Anthony's are good people. You can always trust in Anthony. Yes, indeed. Right now, we're going to do something special. A guy that got famous during some of the quarantine episodes of Kill Tony. We found out about him and his insane relationship with, of all things, a Mexican woman who was trying to uh, trying to make his life absolute hell. This guy is an amazing joke writer. Really, really, really came out to shine during these pandemic episodes of the show. And he's here for us right now, visiting Austin, Texas from Los Angeles. Here he is, Ryan Joseph, everybody. It's the return of Ryan Joseph. So I've been going over to this girl's house every night, and I'm starting to feel like I should tell her. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get why people get freaked out about their parent, hearing their parents have sex. It's way worse when they like make you open your eyes. <laughs> So my best friend's pregnant because she got raped and she wants to know, she called me, if I think she should have the kid. And I'm like, what are you, what are you gonna say to that? Like, my bad? <laughs> you know? I got robbed and the first thing like my racist father said was like, whoa, were they Hispanic or black? I'm like, dad, I don't know. That's why I told the cops they were black. My girlfriend and I both come from a broken home. I don't talk about my shit that much, but she just can't stop talking about what mom did to us. <laughs> well, Ryan God. Joseph, ending it right before the bear. Traveled a long way for this. Did you drive from Los Angeles to Austin or fly or what? No, it was like 70 bucks, just, just so easy to get here. Absolutely. Round trip, 70 bucks, like on Delta. And go. they like, like space it out so you don't have to be next to people. What do you love about Austin? You've been here for what, a couple days? I've been here for like four days, just been doing shows. There's freedom, although you guys are still wearing masks, dude. There's still pussies out here. Yeah. Whoa, such a weird backhanded compliment the there. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I thought there was freedom here. I mean, you guys have shows, but I don't know why everyone's wearing a mask. Yeah, they have free, the freedom to choose whether to wear a mask or not, you fucking Nimrod. <laughs> I think he's one of these guys that d thinks that I'm Corona doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm, you, you don't I'm think Corona exists? Like you're an anti. Well, yeah, the flu does exist. It's a virus. Oh, the flu. Yeah. You That's don't. You don't think is. there's actually a, a coronavirus? It's a virus. It's n never going away. Have you? Uh, have you had it? No. Guys, oh. is anyone here have Corona that he could spit in this guy's mouth, please? Do it. I don't. Yeah, tell there. people how to do that. We there shut. The, all right. If you guys think that's great that we shut down the world for nothing. 
I'm sorry. Wow, Ryan. What other uh, what other wild conspiracies uh, do you have up your sleeve? Uh, everyone's like mad at me now. Yeah, because you're being a fucking dumbass. <laughs> I, Ooh, Red I, Band's really. Mad I mean, at you. seriously, like, he's high you... risk for coronavirus, <laughs> so he's really offended right yeah, now. No, I mean, like, I think we've all had people that have died from Corona in our families. I, I can you that. have? Yes. Really? Yes. My cousin's girlfriend died. Eighteen. <laughs> Uh, head of the, the swimming, like she was like perfect health and died. Wow, She's perfect that's health and died. Yeah, so wild. A, wow. now, there, now there's I a guy should, mad at you. Oh, right? now there's so somebody else mad at me. I should Great. give up. I should oh, I'm lying give. about it. Yeah, that's what I do. Well, I'm well, lying. he's right. lying about dead us. people. Let's he, just relax about the dead people rant that we're going he, on I'm here. I'm sorry wait, to wait, offend he, you. I just he, don't he, think. All right. He's entitled to his opinion, isn't he? No, it's America. Is this not America? It's not America. Where am I? Where the fuck am I? With a female referee. That's where the fuck I am. That's right. So Ryan, tell us about uh, tell us about your uh, your experiences here in Texas while not insulting the entire audience at once. <laughs> uh, it's been pretty cool, man. I like doing shows all the time. I love it. What else other than shows? Um, what else have you done in Texas? Just staying in my hotel room and like, you know, masturbating. Okay, so you famously uh, had a crazy girlfriend. Uh, for the li long-time listeners of this show or for the consistent listeners of this show, Ryan became very popular during the pandemic episodes as a great joke writer, obviously, brand new minute every single week. But then we would find out more and more. We would get updates about this crazy ex-girlfriend of his. Yeah. And uh, so what's the new update? Is there any update? I haven't talked to her in a while, but the girl that I fucked to get back at her, she found out I have a new girlfriend and she started reaching out to, like, she was like, oh, this is why you didn't want to be with me. And she started messaging random girls on my Instagram. And so, so I blocked my new girlfriend just to find out if how to block this bitch. And then my new girlfriend was like, why'd you block me? And then she found out that I've been lying to her. I've been lying to her, my new girlfriend, a lot. So I'm in trouble. Right. Okay. Well, I guess that's a story. Uh, what else, Ryan? What else has been happening since the last time you were on this show? Um, not much, Tony. Just doing mics. Um, Any drugs? Drugs, yes. I'm addicted to an Eastern drug called modafinil. Wow, tell us more about modafinil. I think everybody here would love it. What is it? What, Dude, it's not what a type of Eastern drug? You mean East of the 35? I order it from India. I order it from India. They're great people. Okay, so you like Indians, but not Texans. That's good. I like you guys. I do. I don't like mass. I'm sorry for having feelings about stuff. It's all right. It's okay, yeah, Ryan. This could not possibly be any more depressing. <laughs> when did you get on the meda What is it? Medafidil? It's a smart drug. It's not, but go ahead. It this is. is your worst performance <laughs> ever in the history of the show, so I don't know how it is. smart of a it, drug that you could is. possibly be on. It's a nootropic. Not smart enough to not tell Texans that wearing masks, that they're all pussies for wearing masks at the top of your interview. Well, it's just how I feel, but I'm sorry for saying that. So tell us about, okay, got it. But So tell us about the effects. What does this drug do for you? Dude, like Obama was taking it, Hillary Clinton. That's why I'm so progressive. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Damn. Okay, what it does is it, they, they prescribe it, they prescribe it to like narcolepsy patients, right? Uh-huh. But they use it off label, like in um, Silicon Valley CEOs, and it just makes you like a genius. Yeah, th did it make you a genius? Obviously. <laughs> what, what what type of genius decisions have you been making in life since being on? Well, I'm, s I'm still on um, ac uh, paid administrative leave for my job because they found out I, I write the jokes that I write, and they're investigating me. Yeah, that was before Modafinil. No, that was that was with Modafinil. Wow, so you lost a job on this awesome drug. No, I get paid for doing <laughs> nothing. I'm, I'm, obviously, yeah. I'm obviously doing something right. They're How long have you been now. doing it for? Uh, Probably for like a couple years. Really? Yeah. You just get it shipped to you? Yeah, you can get it shipped to you. From India? Yeah. Okay. It's, it doesn't get you high. It doesn't. It just like... How does it make you feel? It makes you feel like awake. Uh-huh. Gives you energy? Uh, yeah. So it's not like a drug. No. D but it gives you energy. Yeah. Okay. It's different. It's just like you feel like awake. 
Sounds, it doesn't get you hot. Sounds confusing to me. Pe- people don't know about it, but it's great. Because they're hiding it. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they hiding it? Because they don't want everyone to be that smart. <laughs> this is my last appearance on Kill Tony, everyone. Wow. Oh, look at you retiring before no. we tell you to not I, come I already, back. I already know it is. This is the guy I that quits knows. while being fired. You know I, what? You can't fire me because I quit. I, I already know it is, so whatever. Wow. Yeah. Have you been depressed lately? Dude, like, I do have a new girlfriend, and my fucking ex-girlfriend ruined it by, like, calling her and telling her what a liar I am. How did she get her number? Well, she didn't. It was because I blocked her, my new girlfriend. And so my new girlfriend was like, what the fuck are you blocking me for? What's going on? And she's smart. Um, and yeah. She, and, and when you say she's smart, is she Modafidil smart? No, 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 no. She's smarter than me. She's smarter than me. She keeps me grounded, as you can tell. Yeah, absolutely. But sure. um, no, so then I had to tell her everything because I was sleeping with both of them at the same time. Oh, yeah, but yeah. there you go. I wasn't exclusive though. I wasn't. Ex- I basically guy, I did what the Dominican girl did to me. Basically. For a guy that's awake on Modafidil, you're sleeping around a lot, huh? It's a good one. It's a good one. You had to have both at the same time. Why do you think that is? Why do you have a well, Why do you have an insatiable appetite? The new girlfriend's not quite as exciting as the crazy Mexican ex. She actually saw me on Kill Tony and reached out to me. Wow, you okay. brought us together. Uh huh. But she's like in love with Michael Lair. Right. Yeah. No, I love she's that. She's using me to get to Michael Lair. Okay. But she lives in Portland, and okay. so for a while it was just like us being like friends and shit. Uh-huh. And then it became like more. I was gonna go up and see her, but I was having like friends with benefits. Wait, with doesn't your Mexican exes? Doesn't wait, doesn't the Dominican. guy that you, she was cheating on you with? Doesn't he live in Portland? No, that's another girl. Oh. This is the girl that I... This is all confusing yeah. now. There goes Ryan Joseph, right, everybody. Cool. There he goes, Ryan, Ryan Joseph. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> His last time on Kill Tony, he retired tonight. I wasn't even going to tell him not to come back, but he did it. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Medafidil, everybody. Steer clear. I don't, yeah. I don't believe don't it's that. FDA approved. Yeah. Anybody who believes in Medafidil and not the coronavirus, maybe keep an eye on it. <laughs> Some of these episodes of Kill Tony are really just, you know, some people do like NFL will do one week where it's like mental health awareness week. We do every episode. Uh, what, what's next? A female quarterback? <laughs> Your next comedian goes by the name of Thomas Penza, everyone. Thomas Penza. Right oh, wow. It's right here, coming from the audience. One more time for Thomas Penza, everybody. What's happening, Austin? Listen, I don't know about you guys, but I don't understand, like, what the obsession with politics is right now. Like, all right, Trump, right? He's a successful business person. Uh, and by successful, I mean he's had more successful bankruptcies than businesses. Okay, cool. So... As a politician, you just have to be a hypocrite in order to be involved, like Kamala Harris. Have you seen her prosecutorial record? Everyone's like, oh, she's so good for the minority community. But she was, uh, you know, as the prosecu- uh, prosecutor, uh, AG of California, she uh, kept people for slave labor. She uh, hid evidence that would release a person from jail. I mean, it doesn't seem good. Ah. That's like. <laughs> that was fucking great. That was fucking great. Normally, I hate it when people yell things from the audience, but that guy's what at the end of that set was priceless. Thank you, sir. Only one out of every ten thousand heckles do I appreciate, but that was fitting right there. It was literally shock. The question, what? Like, he genuinely was asking you what? Like, what did you mean? That was incredible. It was like watching if uh, John Oliver did a drama or something like that. It was like a one-man play with just fucking no punch-up whatsoever. Wow. Yeah, that's how it felt, yeah. Yeah, my goodness gracious. You, uh, this is your first time doing stand-up? No, no, no. 
couple. I, I've done it a couple times. I did it a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago? Where at? Here. On Kill Tony? Yeah, with Joe Rogan. With Joe oh, my here. God. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Did you go up first that day? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You know how I remember? Because I, I, I did... it was bad? Yeah, yeah I no, I only <laughs> yeah. remember because I remember the first guy that went, Joe Rogan said, you need to do something else. Different. <laughs> Different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I just had a flashback. I don't remember you looking away. I don't remember what you talked about. But it, it, after seeing that said, it makes sense that he what? would give that kind so of advice. So th the funniest thing was that, af like, after Joe Rogan told me, like, you need to do something different, uh -huh. I, took, I took two weeks off of drinking and smoking weed, like, entirely, mm, right? Quitter. You no, know, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, so, I, I drank a bunch today, and then I didn't even expect to get on because there was 80 people, you know, on the list. You didn't expect I, to get on because now, you signed your name on a show where no, names no, no, get pulled no, out I, of a I bucket? Knew was, I knew it was a possibility, but, like, I, I just, I didn't really prepare that much, and so. No, we know. Yeah, I know, you can tell. I know, I know. We know. I know. You know it's bad when D Madness is crying back here. He's back here. <laughs> Wiping tears from he his eyes. He can't even see me, and he knows his how eye. fucked up that was. I get it. I get it. He I could know. hear it, though. Yeah. He could hear it very clearly. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting. He's fucking... Yeah, he actually hears better than most people in this yeah. room, so he's really sad. That's why he's crying. Right now, he's Stevie wondering what the fuck oh, you thought was going to happen up here tonight. <laughs> so let's talk about it, Thomas. Yes, sir. What yes. do you do for work? Uh, I'm a poker dealer. A poker dealer, yep. indeed. Yes, yep. absolutely. My goodness. Yep. I moved. I moved here from uh, Massachusetts. I told you before I was in Boston. You, uh, you know. Yeah. Needle me on that uh, comedy scene, but I, uh, I had like eight months off uh, during the pandemic. You know, we got laid off. All the casino employees got, uh, you know, canned, and uh, I came down here because I felt like, you know, there was a bunch of people that I worked with that liked it down here and. Mm -hmm. You know, they were doing some uh, open mic stuff, and I said, fuck it. Like, let's move, you know? Let's see what happens. Right. That makes sense. Yep. You get made fun of a lot by friends and uh, family? Uh, yeah, it, dep it depends on the situation, but yeah, it happens. A lot. A happen. lot. Not a lot. Not a lot, but... How know. do they make fun of you? What do they make fun of? Um, I don't know. Your lack of a chin? <laughs> oh, Natasha loves it. No. Uh, so, yeah. What do they make fun of about you? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I generally don't get made fun of a lot, but I don't put myself in a position to be made fun of. I just kind of like well, lay you back. certainly have tonight, you fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you fucking hey, motherfucker. Get up on a stage and tell a bunch of jokes that aren't funny. Yeah, I get it. Like that, may, that would generally lead you to be made fun of. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you do, what do you do for fun? What's, what are some things that would, uh, um, some redeeming qualities about Thomas Penza? It, we'll leave the comedy stuff out. Uh, I, uh, I, I play disc golf. Uh, okay, ooh, that's fun. Yeah, I, uh, what else? Uh, regular golf. I play poker. Like uh, you know, play cash games, tournaments. Um, okay. Do you have any posters in your bedroom? Or? So I have actually one poster in what? my bedroom. Uh, it, when I went to Vegas, the first year I went to Vegas, I played the uh, the ten thousand dollar main event, the poker tournament, and uh, I was at uh, Fremont, and there was a guy doing like freestyle art, whatever, and it was like a Star Wars. You know, poster. So there was like a Death Star, and then like Luke and uh, uh, Vader, like you know, battling Jesus in the middle. Fucking crazy! I know it's a Star fuck. Wars poster what? in yeah, your yeah, bedroom. Yes, sir. Fuck I got it. I got that on the wall. It's one of my favorite. It's one Dork of my Dork, you are. Yes, sir. He's a professional yes. nerd. A professional, professional nerd. nerd. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. What do you think's the nerdiest thing about you? Because you said that like that was cool. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah, like, there's you a lot. See, there's, there's a really, lot. really there's special lot. Star Wars poster. One of a kind. I was in Vegas checking out the Fremont Hotel. Like so much in information in that fucking dog shit Star Wars poster story. So what do you uh, think's the nerdiest thing about you? The nerdiest thing about me? Uh, Be honest here. Think about your day. Think about how it starts, what you go through, the types of things that you do, decisions that you I don't know, man. There's make. a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, I, played, I played Magic the Gathering professionally oh, for a while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, played, uh, let me ask you this. What's yeah. the coolest thing about you? Like, if you the were coolest like, thing like, about if me. a girl um, saw you do something that you do and was like, "Wow, Thomas." Uh, so, despite all the nerdy shit about me, uh, I also do like uh, some dancing stuff. Like, I oh can, like, my pop fucking and, like, god, what yeah. kind of music do you dance to? Uh, more like funky stuff. Like, funky. Like, yeah. well, you're the in luck. Kill Tony yeah. Band, ladies and gentlemen, specializes in funky. Give me some funky shit. Let Let's me go. remind you, this is the thing that he said was the coolest thing about. 
about him. It's close. What it's we're close. about to see. It's close. We went past the nerdy thing about him. This is now the coolest thing about him. Thomas, you better dance your fucking heart out. Feel free to put the mic back in the mic stand for this. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Penza looking for redemption right here. Oh, like it, Tony. I don't want it to ever end. He's gyrating. He keeps doing this thing with his uh, I kind of like it. I, I like didn't it. want that to ever end. If you if you guys just win for three more hours, I just would have sat here like this, enthralled. Oh my god. I was fucking McLovin' it on He did that. the weakest high five to the... Wow. I mean, the way that you dance, it's like all robot. Like there's like snakes yeah. moving around the way that you do that. It's fucking <laughs> I freaky. Get, I get the feeling he's never paid for sex. <laughs> <laughs> really? My goodness. And you do that sometimes at the club or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that works wow. for you? Girls come up to you after that? And was like, I, what? Ha I have fun. I'm not worried about that. Girls come fun, right yeah. up to you and they get in your face and they're like, just want to ask you, like, hey. well, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, like, like, like are, you, are you okay? Remind me of Elaine from Seinfeld when she was doing that. Oh, thing. yeah. It really yeah, was. Totally. For those of you just listening to this podcast, you're really missing out. It was exactly Watch like Elaine episode. from Seinfeld. <laughs> In fact, his dancing that he said was the coolest thing about him was the most comedic thing he did when Damn. up here. The comedy was dramatic. You should, mix, he should mix the dancing with comedy. You should find you really a way should. to do it. Wait, you know what? You know what I think we should do? I think let's do an experiment here. The band plays at half volume, right? Just sort of like light and smooth, the same type of thing you were just playing, but just a voluminously lower and you do the exact same act that you did while doing some of your dance moves during it. Just yeah. keep the, uh, just get, do everything with the one arm and keep the one arm, the mic in front of you. This is going to be 60 seconds from Thomas Penza doing the act he did earlier that got zero laughs, but while dancing and doing the exact same act. This is a great experiment. This is Thomas Penza. All right. Got dance. Yeah. You know what I learned about the past in the past year? <laughs> I learned that our government fucking sucks. I mean, think about it. Look at the pandemic. Trudeau, he's up in Canada. He's giving everybody two thousand dollar checks. More dancing. He's in blackface thinking he's Oprah. Oh, do, uh, here you get a check. And you get a check. What do we get? $1,200. Oh, one month's rent? Once. Hey, well, thank you, sir. Are you sure you don't want any change? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. Hard and laughs throughout. We figured it out. We figured it out. Sometimes on Kill Tony, we do all the math in just a few minutes about how to take someone from zero to fucking 40 miles zero an hour. Zero plus one. And then Dan Dane Cook was created. <laughs> wow. Yeehaw. Giddy up. You, you know, you, you did it. You figured out your stand-up. You took some jokes right on, the, uh, right on the part between your neck and your bottom lip there. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. He had a huge breakthrough here today. It's Thomas Penza. Thomas Penza figuring it out. I think you should do also some dance moves after each punchline. Yeah, like that. Yep. Oh, my God. Coming to the Paramount Theater in the next year. He's going to be headlining his own shows. One day I'm going to be opening up for that guy. 
You guys want to go to the bucket one more time, huh? All right. Your next comedian goes by the name of Ben Horn, everyone. Ben Horn has been selected. He's coming in from the back door. I like that. I think that if he actually had a band behind him and did comedy, it would probably work. Yeah, people would really... It worked here. Just to let you know, we know that that won't actually work. But it worked here. Here he is, Ben Horn. Thanks. Uh, so before I did comedy, I was infantry in the army for 10 years. And yeah, thanks. And the question people always ask me is, have you ever killed anybody? And I always say, yeah, I used to have two sisters. <laughs> One of them wasn't put out, so. <laughs> I picked up a lot of bad habits from the military, like I pee in the shower. That's one of them. My girlfriend thinks it's weird, but I think it's because I sit when I pee. Also, I take baths, so. I watch way too much porn, too. I didn't think I had a problem until uh, the other day I noticed the keys were getting stuck when I was typing. Yeah, my phone's a touch screen, so. All right, thanks. You have uh, 20 seconds left if you want to do any more. If you want to be done, you can be done. But now I'll close it with that. That's it. That's it. 38 seconds from Ben Horn. Getting out while the getting is good. I love it. So, Ben, welcome to the show. Is your first time on? Yeah, first time. Hell yeah. I like your style, man. Uh, you. you were in the Army? I was, yeah. I and mean, you look like you clearly fought in the Civil War. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's Steve, that's Steve Ren is easy, man. He, he solves mysteries. I literally just got that for the first time outside like five minutes ago. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so what? Uh, when did you get done with the Army? Uh, was it like two and a half years ago? And you, that's that. when you started stand-up? Yeah, basically. Okay. Where'd you have to go for the army? Uh, stateside. Um, Did you vomit your mouth a little bit when there was a Palestinian up here earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Where'd you go? Stateside? Uh, like when I was stationed here, it was uh, New York, Kentucky, uh, and then El, El Paso is where I yeah, ended not, it. And then many... overseas, just Afghanistan. Oh, okay. There you go. You saved yeah. Afghanistan for last there. Uh, I was about to talk shit. You're like, yeah, I fought the battles of New York, Kentucky, and El Paso. Uh, oh, yeah, and Afghanistan. A, uh, yeah. A bomb-filled uh, war zone. What was that like? How long were you in Afghanistan for? Oh, way too long. Um, it sucked. <laughs> yeah. It sucked real bad. Right. Um, but, I don't know. It's it fun. Like, yeah. What was fun about it? it? Tell us. These people want to know. I don't know. Like, uh, you, you figure out... I mean, you find weird ways to entertain yourself when you have nothing else to do. Like, like killing have, random people yeah, with sniper just, rifles yeah, and shit. Just anybody walking by. Like, how, like what kind of ways... Of entertaining. Like, people. I remember one time my buddies uh, got naked and covered themselves in, like, the glow stick, like, goo from the inside and just started running into everybody's rooms, like, in the middle of the night, waking people up. Okay. It was hilarious. Okay. Did they dance, like, the last guy at all while they were doing it? No, be no, no. Way better dance. Frightening. Moves. Just a lot of practical jokes. Just riffing on so each other. So you've been back for two and a half years. Do you have any, uh, like, uh, anything? Do you have nightmares and stuff still or anything like that? Nah. No? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I got I got away pretty easy. Heck yeah, the Republicans love wow. that shit. This Fuck yeah, table. absolutely. I love this table, by the way. Yeah, they're great. We need we always need to save that table for like actual yeah. like <laughs> I don't know like uh like uh successful white people or something. It seems to be like a good the table Karen for that. That they mix in with the whistling Mexicans and the fucking. Uh, not sure what type of wild thing is going on here. You ever watch these two in any of the porns that you watch? <laughs> this table right she here. She looks familiar. Yeah. That dude has his leg up really high on the he table. He does. Look at that. And he has his mask on deeply. I do believe this is Bane from Batman uh, sitting in the front row. Your jokes about me and my daughter are not appreciated. <laughs> uh, so, Ben, what do you do for work now? Uh, I just work at a grocery store. Really? Which grocery store? Uh, H-E-B. Oh! Uh. We love H-E-B here at Kill Tony. Huge supporters all yeah. the way through and through. Wait, wait. H-E-B plus? No, no. Just normal H-E-B. It doesn't matter, Brian. Way to, way to, way to, way to dampen down a great energy like in the room. <laughs> 
You go to H E B plus? Is that Fuck for yeah. is that for fat people? Yes. H E B plus size. No, it's got everything. Yeah, I bet it does. Uh, I love it. So, uh, what exactly do you do at H E B? I'm just a personal shopper, so whenever people do those uh, online orders, I just walk around with a big cart and grab everybody, everybody's shit and throw it oh, in there. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. My goodness. We were actually just uh, placing an order today for H-E-B, and the uh, website went down for some reason. It's you like, know what? get it together. You know, one thing I, I've noticed about H-E-B, though, horrible meat, not the best that meat. That is not true. They I love famously meat. have good nope. meat. Yeah. Nope. I'm a fan. Go get, go, go, go get a ribeye from H-E-B, and then go get a ribeye from Costco. Costco. A hundred times better. Oh, God. This is also coming from Red Band, who believes that McDonald's is healthy for you. Uh, admits to drinking orange drink from McDonald's. Hey, let's have a grill off. Uh, <laughs> Brian, what are you, you going to grill? Yeah, come to my house. I'll, 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 I'll do a blind taste test. Well, okay, we got to bring D Madness. Yeah, then. bring the blind right. guy. D Madness is there. Bring the blind guy. There's no doubt D Madness will tell you which cheat. one is Costco and which one is H E B. H E B has famously good meat. I don't like it. What did, what did you I have from H E B? I've had a lot of meat from there. And Why did you just... keep getting meat if you didn't like the meat from well, there? Well, because I feel like I keep on getting bad meat. Like I'm like, oh, this might be just like a bad cut. Are you the one cooking it? <laughs> yeah. No, but like if you get like a ribeye, it's like that thin, and then you go to Costco, it's like you got a fat ribeye. Oh, so what you want is a thicker cut steak, is what you're saying? Yeah, and they don't offer that. Yeah, they do. If you go to the butcher, I went to the butcher. butcher, I I did that, Tony. Brian is Brian is in full nonsense mode tonight. I did it twice. (laughs) You went to the butcher and said, "I want a thicker cut," and they didn't give you a thicker. cut? No, they're like, "Here's what we got." Okay, you work at H E B, so you can clearly say that they will cut a steak the way you want it. Yep, because any grocery store in the world will do that. I didn't for me. In the world is the crazy part of what you're saying. Well, their normal steaks though are not fat. They're like really thin ribeyes. I mean, it depends on. Okie dokie. Uh, I, 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 how much are the prostitutes in Afghanistan? <laughs> I mean, just, it's and how do you pay them? Do I'm, you pay them or do you just kill them when you're done? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to know. I just want to know. <laughs> you pay them in really anything. I mean, m- the exchange rate over there is insane. It's like a, yeah. a dollar is like $28 over there. What about the over? language barrier? How do you get them to do fellatio? I just use a terp. You just point? Just use an interpreter and say, Oh, an interpreter. Tell her I want oral. Right. And then who makes it happen? Okie dokie. Uh, oh. I think that part of the Afghani prostitute in part of the interview. And you, and you climaxed in her mouth, did you? Obviously, you yeah, yeah. You give her the old wow. fucking Abbottabad special? Yeah. Wow. They're different over there. They have different techniques, you know? It's like this, or is it like this? Is they it do it upside down, which is weird. Busted could, right uh, in her fucking little... Uh, are they three holers? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Where would the third hole be? Uh, I mean, the more you shoot them, the more holes are the in them. Uh, <laughs> you can fuck all of them. <laughs> ben Horn. Ben's got it. I love it, man. Brian was in the military for a long time. He's he, he got in a lot of trouble. He did a lot of bad things. He's been all over the world. Mm-hmm. Where have you been? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> red, red bit. Are you teeing up something here? No, yeah, I mean, he has good stories about it. Okie dokie. Uh, moving on. So, Ben, what else about you? What would we be surprised to, uh, to know about? About Ben Horn? Man, I, I don't know. <laughs> I got another... Um, just got out of a long-term relationship. Ooh. She's gay. So really? She's a lesbian yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, she's fully gay. Did you have hints that she was a lesbian before she announced it to you? Was she trying to just, uh, was she doing a lot of licking above your butthole? I mean, she <laughs> With, like, your legs up? Was she trying to eat out the area between your balls and your butt? Is that her, her mustache? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the mustache in the divorce. She, uh... She did used to pull a blanket over my head every time I'd go down on her. Oh, yeah. that's a thing. That's what they start to do when they start turning into a lesbian. Yeah. Really? And her favorite mm-hmm. sexual position was scissoring. So that sh- probably <laughs> yeah, should have been a... that does it. Your should've balls should've are still well. sore from all that scissoring. She how started re- wearing a lot of snapbacks and flannel. I how, recent seen it was the, uh, how recent was the breakup? Uh, what was this, like, uh, about a year ago? Did she become a lesbian after she saw Thomas Penza dance? I... <laughs> Is she does she re- does she like? <laughs> Go ahead. 
There's probably some new lesbians after that one, for right. sure. Does she like football? <laughs> she does, yeah. yeah. Did she tell you she was a lesbian, or did she leave you and then went no, with No, no, that's how, that's how we broke up. She sat me down one day, and she was like, yo, dude, I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> do you think she's being honest, or do you think she's telling you that so that you don't murder the man that uh, she no, ended up she's, with? No, she's, she's got a girlfriend. She's, she's full-blown. Full-blown. She's, wow. yeah. well, she's all the way in it. She won't be blown much of anything now that she's a lesbian. <laughs> wow. What was her hair like? Um, like short, girly hair, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> short, girly hair. How, how short? Uh, I don't know, like well, neck good. length. Okay, shoulder, shoulder length. length. Yeah. She yeah. have combat boots on. Yeah, <laughs> lesbian. That's true. Yeah. You ever catch her wearing your uh, big old teams? lesbian combat boot wearing right. bitch? Yep. <laughs> I hate men. I hate men. I hate men. Well, fuck you. We hate you. <laughs> ben, I absolutely love that uh, someone like you can serve our country. Come back two and a half years ago, start a stand-up comedy career, and do it. You know, for a guy that's been to Afghanistan, you're probably the most mentally stable person that was up here tonight. It's crazy. You would have thought... You would have thought some of the people... One guy, Brian, had to rip his jacket off to give him a gift, and meanwhile, he didn't do anything for the United States of America. I mean, at this point, it's just kind of hard to, like, shake me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, how come you didn't a... stay in? Why did you uh, leave the military, and did you receive an honorable discharge? Uh, yeah, I got an honorable. It was just... Um, my brain and body stopped working as well, so I was like, I think... You left voluntarily? Or yeah, you did, yeah. You didn't I want mean, to make it, it a career? I did at first. That's why I did 10 years. But at 10 years, you either stay in for an additional 10 until you retire, or you get out. Those when they discharged you, did they tell you that it's because they're a lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes, Ben Horn, everybody. Great uh, performance. Thanks. He's on Instagram at the Ben Horn. He's got that name. All one word, the Ben Horn. Spelled exactly how it sounds. Brian Holtzman just gave him a, what'd you give him? What was the gift? What was that? Ben, show us what he gave you. Ben, what, what did he give gift? you? Come here. No, go this way, this way, this way, Ben. This way over here. Come, come here, come gift? here. What did he give you? Hold that up. What is that? Oh, oh wow. Hey, Look it's at that. my girlfriend. Some African art. <laughs> Very exciting. Look at that. There he goes, Ben Horn. Uh, Zach, are we are we ready for that thing? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is a uh, special treat. Here we go. This is also one of the newest residences of Austin, Texas, ladies and gentlemen. A regular on the show for a uh, quite a while now. Absolutely unbelievable. Trained originally from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Queens, New York, trained in the art of improv in Chicago, Illinois. He's been doing comedy for over 20 years. A new minute of Kill Tony here by the regular. The one, the only, the great Michael Lehrer, everybody, is here. Wow. Crowd goes wild. I should explain. I should explain. Um, I do characters on this show, and this is a new character named Patch Adams. Patch Adams, the unknown Sam comic. Now, Tony, do you know what Sim means? Do I know what what means? Sim. Sim. S-I-M? Sim. Stem? Sim. S-T-E-M. Stem. Yes. Yes. What does this stand for? Science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah, I'm the unknown sim comic, and now I'm a classically trained thespian, so I want to develop this character in front of you, all right? (laughs) First of all, one, we need to know that I'm the unknown science, technology, engineering, 
and math comic. Thank you. Now, I need to um, find my voice of this character. Now, my inspiration is Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. All right? So, I like to go through the table and to hear it in my ear if the three of you, one at a time, can say, put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> Brian, who again? Put the lotion in the basket. Boom. <laughs> All right, next. Uh, okay. Uh, put the lotion in the basket. All right. Has no one seen this fucking movie? <laughs> Yo, John. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Put the lotion in the basket. Thank you. Oh, I didn't know you wanted us to say it like Buffalo, but I was playing yeah. it like myself. I would have done it the best, you asshole. Really, uh, really bad, it. really bad direct. Yeah, do he's been doing it. 80s references all night. You, you all right. <laughs> I'm prepared. Now, if I'm a, I'm a classically trained thespian, so I need to warm up my instrument before I do a new character, because like I said, by 2025, everyone on Santa Night Live will be in a wheelchair. <laughs> so I'm preparing my audition, all right? Now, thank you, thank you. I got you back, Governor. The roughest start ever. <laughs> all right, so Boca Wombus. Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega, Topeka Bodega. Orientals are rugs, not people. Orientals are rugs, not people. Orientals are rugs, not people. Armenians are not MMA fighting, drag racing, identity thieves. Armenians are not MMA fighting. Drug racing, identity thieves. <laughs> Cockfighting is not the national pastime of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Cockfighting is not the national pastime of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Cockfighting is not the national pastime of Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh, I'm warmed up. Are you guys ready for Patch Adams? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. This is my newest character, Patch Adams, the unknown STEM comic. So, if they clone the sheep, does that mean I got two sheep pregnant? <laughs> A squared plus A squared plus B squared equals B where Pythagorean was a pederast. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're still, is there more? No, um, <laughs> in fact, um, I hopefully will die today. No, you're I'm good. I'm kidding. You're good. I'm kidding. He's just hey. kidding. Put the fucking lotion on the boss. There you go. <laughs> Red band with a callback from six minutes ago. <laughs> Michael, what's going on, buddy? How you feeling? It's been a bad week. Yeah. What happened? Bad week. You got oh, ALS? I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I got this 150 year old mystery, and you never know where I'm the night's gonna go. But I'm happy for Brian Holtzman to be here, because there, there's no one else 
I just like more. Wow, you you're not a big Brian Holtzman no, fan. No, he's. I will uh, beat your ass. Yeah, I know. I will kick your fucking ass. I don't care about I the know. chair. I know, and like that's all you have in your life that you can beat a, a man who's five foot seven in a wheelchair who has a muscular degenerate disease. And I'll sneak up on you. <laughs> you won't even see me coming. Oh, oh, I hear you. <laughs> oh shit, he can put that thing in reverse. Yeah, man. <laughs> Michael, I noticed, uh, I noticed earlier, uh, before the show started, which was, uh, I think about three hours ago, in the green room, that you were already drinking vodka Red Bulls. Uh, <laughs> would you like yeah. to share a little bit of the audience with uh, about how much you drank today? Because um, we don't know where the ALS ends and the alcoholism <laughs> begins exactly. Right. Now it just yeah. seems like we're hanging out with an alcoholic. Yeah. Um, well, I like to keep the ladies guessing. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, that way you can never get knocked for drinking too much. You can just be like, my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Lair, I mean, you know, I noticed that a lot of ladies, like, absolutely adore you. This guy gets, just like, wh what's his name, Ryan Joseph was saying earlier, he has girls hitting him up, flirting with him, in order so that they can eventually just get somewhere close to Michael Lair. Yeah. Tell us about uh, some of the magic. How do, you, how do you think that works? Like, what do you think it is? That um, well, um, um, I've had many theories throughout the year. I mean, yours. One of them was with women. I'm like, the man you want to marry and the kid you want to have. Um, and then I'm precocious. I'm a motherfucker. And I step to anyone because no one will call my buff. Absolutely right. Um, yeah, and I got a regional accent. A lot of intangibles that weren't my choice. Like, I have a cute face. I'm precocious as a motherfucker. <laughs> I have a regional accent. I'm a silver fox. And then on top of that, I built, you know, the genius comedy you saw in the night. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Plus, he has a left hand, a left hand that doubles as a vibrator anytime uh, he lifts it above his. Well, uh, Tony, you know my disease is depressing, and um, I can. No I know some guys that dance just to try to end up looking like you. You ever I seen know. a guy dance like this? Because we yeah. did tonight. It's Thomas Penza sitting right over there. Still hasn't killed himself. Everybody, I'm sorry to cut you off, Michael. Is there another hand? Is there another what? Handy here? Another hand in here? Handy. There's not another handy in here, is there? No, there's a guy literally missing a handy out front, though. Um. I don't even know. Can we call Man. that guy handicapped or just capped? No, no, he's no. Just, he's just capped. He's just cool. He's fucked I up. Can. He's definitely fucked up. I can, I can call back anything. But not when I'm interrupted that much. Right. Right, absolutely. Oh, man. Why do you get to go on the airplane first? That's what I want to know. Yeah. But I'm they, sick and tired of waiting for you to get on the fucking airplane. But they so when I get off, and you get off last when I get off first. Yeah, but they strap me in like Hannibal Lecter. All right, to the fucking beverage cart. You're getting your fucking whiskey and coke. I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. You motherfucker. Yo, hey, I'm in on Tinder and in Austin, and a lot of you girls like beers. And for Brian, I hope you like guys who um, have a pussy under their nose. 
I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to beat you down. Oh, my God. You two are a dynamic duo together. I actually once watched uh, Michael Lair on Dead Air. Um, I've, uh, I'm a big fan of your podcast, Brian Holtzman. And, Thank you. Uh, I love that episode, Michael Lair on uh, Holtzman's podcast. Did you have fun that day? Yeah, but never again. No, I'll tell <laughs> you why. No, I for real. No, we're not putting no. any ramps in there, all right? Um, That's it. Yeah, right. Um, you know the only women you date need ramps. All right, now, I've been on Brian's show, and now uh, I killed, absolutely killed, but I made the mistake of bringing with me a friend who is balloon-sized cities and an extra small sports bra and always wears Lululemons. <laughs> so, even though I killed, he had her on 10 episodes of <laughs> her me. That's true. Wow. And Thank never you. me again. <laughs> Hollywood <true>. motherfuckers. <laughs> we're bringing it here. <laughs> Prepare to be exploited. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. Boobs and beef. It's a shame. I, I feel like I'm made up for um, the earlier part of my set. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. You're in the zone right now. It wasn't great, but it was good. Absolutely this morning. Do you have lights inside of your jacket? Yeah. I'm seeing lights from my angle. Well, you want to show them? <laughs> what is happening? What the fuck? Well... Here's a lesson to all your comedians out on the street. Don't overcomplicate them. Because, man, this is hard enough. <laughs> it really is hard. But you make it look easy. Michael Lair, MichaelLairComedy.com. He did it again. Guys, he just moved here two weeks ago. Brian Holtzman moved here this week. It's all happening. This is going to be the biggest comedy city in the world. It's already, it's already arguably up there because there's shows happening here. We're doing this every Monday. A little fun fact because everybody's been asking because these shows sell out and then they sell out again and again and again and again. They go on sale every uh, Monday at noon on the Antones uh, website. So that's how it happens. A lot of people wonder. Because it sells out so fast. 95 people in the room tonight. Give yourselves a hand for uh, coming out tonight. That's every episode here. How about a big hand for this drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt? We're seeing it live right now for the very first time. And it's sweet. Wow, look at that fucking thing. Get in super close there, Ryan. It's me. Oh, my God. Ryan J. Ebelt gets noticeably better at art every week. It's frightening. Red Band's attacking Holtzman with a sledgehammer. I'm standing over all of them, sort of like a puppet master of some kind. This is super fucking cool. Wait till you guys see this on the video. RyanJEbelt.com for everything, including the new Kill Tony, the coloring book, and everything. How about a big hand for Ryan J. Ebelt sitting through the show in Los Angeles? How about a big hand for tonight's guest, the host of Dead Air... Ladies and gentlemen, he's got a new merch store. It is Holtzman.store, believe it or not. You can get all the new Holtzman merch. Holtzman.store. Brian, anything else? Oh, yeah. Follow him at Twitter. He's at Holtzman Brian. On Facebook, he's Brian Holtzman. And on Instagram, he's Brian Holtzman. All one word. B-R-I-A-N-H-O-L-T-Z-M-A-N. Guys, I don't know about you, but I am obsessed with this band, am I right? John Dees yeah, yeah. on the keys. Follow him at John Keys, J-O-N-K-E-Y-Z. Michael Gonzalez on drums. Follow him at Mike A. Gons, G-O-N-Z, 1-3. Mike A. Gons, 13. Deep Madness is on social media at Lorenzo Dwayne Jackson. And Matt Muling on the electric guitar is at Mutation. 
at M-U-E-H-T-A-T-I-O-N. MTMMakesMusic.Bandcamp.com. Listen to some of his new music. And check out John Dees' new single that dropped this week on his Instagram, at John Keys, J-O-N-K-E-Y-Z. Hey, look at this painting behind us. Oh, yeah, and the painting from um, Chris Rogers. Wow. It's Brian Redband as... American Psycho. It really is a painting. Wow, that's awesome. For, he did that during the episode. Brian J, look. Love that. Brian J. I love there, show that. the phone. That's Come here, bring awesome. it here, bring it here, bring it here. Wow. He did a painting of just red band. Crazy. That's amazing, man. Brian J, come out to Texas. We miss you. One more hand for Ryan J about Chris Rogers art. Woo. He's a Chris Rogers art. MichaelLairComedy.com, Holtzman.store, Red Band. Hey, you know, Holtzman just moved back or moved to Austin. We are bringing back the podcast, Dead Air, Brian Holtzman's podcast. We do a new episode this week. Go to DeskSquad.tv to check that out. Audience, we do it every week right here. It's so much fun. These shows are a blast. Shout out to Phoenix. We had so much fun here this past weekend in Phoenix, Arizona. We're going to Miami in two weeks. And some other dates getting ready to be announced. The vaccinations are coming, people. Our new president, Joe Biden, really getting it done. Incredible. Thank you, Tony. Incredible what he's doing, the work that he single-handedly is doing. Sure am glad we have this dead rabbit in the office. Anyway, live audience, thank you guys so much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.